Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live. You know, sometimes I wonder if President Barack Obama is actually planning on leaving the White House at all. And if he's planning on leaving, why is he doing all this major expense on the U.S. economy to send all of the soldiers and equipment over to Europe only when supposedly President-elect Donald Trump will end up bringing it all back? Uh, well, he's making true on his promises there. You know, just the other day there, I shared with you that he was uh, sending 4,000 more troops there to uh, Europe, and he has definitely uh, carried out that promise that he would do, as you can see on your screen and behind me here. Uh, he has actually brought in the first wave. They landed in Poland. They're in there now, even as of today. And not only that, we also have uh, that first wave of military equipment as well. It also has uh, managed to come in. And uh, I was mentioning to you about the shipload of equipment there. Some 400 plus uh, wheeled equipment coming out, not to mention tanks and everything else a massive amount of military hardware being shipped to Germany uh, for somewhere here in Europe, no doubt going to the Baltics. Uh, but as you can see here with this video here, I'll just, just jump forward a little bit here. Uh, what was interesting is the guy that's speaking on here now, he talks about how that some of the equipment was having a hard time with the cold weather. Uh, and as you can see, they're dragging the tanks off rather than driving them off. Of course, that might be too for the safety of the uh, of the ship there, that they can control it a little bit better by taking the tanks off in that, that way there. Uh, but anyway, all the equipment did arrive safely in Germany. And again, uh, of course, not painted for the colors they need. But then again, if you're going to... If you're going to kind of pick on someone and try to get a war going, I don't guess it really matters what color it is. just makes it easier for your enemy to be able to find out who you are and where you are. And if that doesn't beat all, there's another one here, the Aviationist. Uh, this is something uh, that's, a, that's another one that's really kind of troubling right here. You're seeing on your screen and behind you here, this happened over Area 51 in the United States. It's the third time this has happened. This was, on, uh, was published on January the 6th today. Uh, but these photographs show the U.S. using a Sukhoi, uh, an Su-27P flanker in dogfighting with an F-16 over the uh, Arizona desert there out in Area 51, near Area 51. And the, uh, the photographer there, uh, he wasn't, you know, necessarily a professional photographer, but he was hoping to be able to see, you know, some of the different things that fly over in that area. And he was able to capture them, the U.S. government, practicing fighting with F-16s, the Sukhoi 27. Um, and, of course, some people might ask the question, how in the world did the U.S. get a hold of a Sukhoi? Well, remember Ukraine and the U.S.'s helpful hand in making sure that that nation come tumbling down? You know, it could be that the U.S. maybe was actively involved in that for the very purpose of a future war they were anticipating with Russia in the first place. And where else could you get yourself your hands on a whole bunch of uh, Russian equipment than to bring down a nation where it's loaded down with Russian-made equipment, Sukhois of all types, the MiGs, you name it. And of course, they're practicing there over the skies with a Sukhoi uh, SU-27. That And here it is here. You can see it here now. And no, it's not the American version only painted that way. It is a real Sukhoi. You know that by the tail fins because the tail fins on the Sukhoi are straight. And on the uh, excuse me, the American uh, made uh, jet that looks similar that was painted that way, the tail fins are slightly angled off in either direction there. Uh, but not in this case here. The Sukhoi is definitely the, the, the plane being used here. And, uh, and 
being practiced right over that over that river there. So it's very troubling indeed to see these type things going on and make you wonder makes you wonder what in the world is happening in the first place there. Um, also, in another news here in, on Sputnik, uh, the, according, according to Sputnik, the Chinese are planning on making three more aircraft carriers. You want to talk about a nation that wants to rule the seas like America. America has ten, but now China planning on having three of them. Even Russia only has one. Makes me wonder about a new world order and China being the head of that new world order. To see China start building aircraft carriers one after another, China must have some money in their pocket. And no doubt they do. They've had a lot of cheap labor selling all those American-built products in China to the United States. They've been making a fortune there, but it definitely is not going to the people that live there either. That's one thing's for sure. Uh, this here, I didn't actually intend to have this up here, but I thought it was kind of an interesting uh Caption I've seen earlier today on Twitter there. It is a cartoon character that has been done. Syria independent journalist aim strikes true. And uh, it's a picture of actually our cartoon actually of Vanessa Bealy and Ava Bartlett. Uh, and they are two very incredible journalists. Uh, I do have the acquaintance of uh, Vanessa Bealy there. And uh, she has done a remarkable job in exposing the propaganda that is coming out in Western media. So they show the balloon of BBC, CNN, and Fox News all going down uh, and how they are connected directly to Al Nursa and Al Qaeda. Uh, very sad. In fact, another thing happened uh, today, and I, I'm hoping I have this up, uh, I, and I'm not seeing it on here as of yet. Uh, this is not it here. This is the editor in chief for RT's uh, news. There, she really busts the CIA in uh, in their accusations that RT and uh, of course Sputnik they say are propaganda machines against uh, uh, that were against uh, uh, the DNC inside the government. There, anybody that knows anything about RT, if you ever listen to RT, they have had so many. Uh, uh, unbiased reporting on both ways. And that's obvious that Putin would have loved to have seen Donald Trump in. That's that's just a give me. I mean, anybody would know that. The United States is the same way. When, you, when the U.S. sees someone running in another election in another country, they would like to see the outcome different as well. You don't believe it? Look at what happened in Israel when uh, Barack Hussein Obama went over there and sent a team over there to try to topple uh, none other than Netanyahu from getting into office. So, yes, the U.S., very guilty in doing these things. But RT, I've seen many of the views there. They had a lot of different uh, uh, programs on that was against Trump and, of course, those that were for Trump. Uh, same thing with Hillary, both ways. But as in one report stated there was that, you know, why in the world do you think that, uh, that, that Putin actually wrote all these emails that Hillary Clinton and and the others, uh, Podesta and all of those, and, and all these scandals, do you think that he actually wrote the emails for them? Even if he was the one that actually did the, uh, the, the leaks of the emails. But there's been so many specialists that have stated, and even uh, WikiLeaks themselves, uh, uh, Julian Assange, that has stated that it was never uh, anybody from Russia that leaked this information. So anyway, RT's editor-in-chief, she really took a, took a tackle on that. What I was hoping to share with you, though, was a um, was an actual video footage of a uh, suicide bombing in Syria today. It was very devastating, and I thought I still had this up, but I must have dropped that down. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting because one of the people that reported on that, in fact, I think I know where I can find that at as well, real quick, maybe we can catch up before we step out of our broadcast today. But they were saying how that this is definitely not a white helmets propaganda scene because there was nothing for them to be able to report on that was propaganda in this, uh, and, and so 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 very true um, on on that particular report there because uh, there were there were no white helmets there at all. In fact, the blast was caught. The guy that. He didn't catch the blast itself, but as he came around the corner, you could see the debris coming out of the sky, hitting the ground still. Um, and it was just very devastating blast. And I know that I'm actually a follower of the journalist that did it, or that posted this, and so I'm hoping I can maybe quickly catch this uh, and share that with you as well. Uh, there's so many of them on here, though, and I, uh, gosh, I may, may not have it. So... Anyway, I was hoping to show that with you. I wanted you to be able to see that, that video. Here it is right here. 
Uh, he is a uh, Syrian guy that, that's actually there. And uh, let's see here if we can find the video that he posted about this. Yes, here it is right here. The blast goes off. Watching your screen, just as he turns, there it comes, there it comes, there it comes. Two of the pieces just come tumbling down, and you can actually see another one. If you look here, here's more of the debris coming down. The blast had just taken place, the stuff had gone way up in the sky, the big pieces fall down there. And one thing, you know, guys, I'll tell you, you talk about is something propaganda or not? Could the bomb have just gone off and then they all come running out? Uh, I don't believe so. I'm going to let it kind of go through really quick and then I'm going to show you something that I noticed, all right? Um, you got the people laying down on the ground there. They're a little further away from the blast. People are coming running from there. This guy has actually got a fire on his clothes. He's getting off his jacket, his, his, his headpiece there because it's cold this time of year there was uh, on fire as well. Now, at first, you're going to see a guy going to come out. He's all bloody and everything and almost looks staged until I went back and really looked at it closely. You know, and, uh, you, you know, it, 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 like I said, it actually looks staged. But I want to show you something here. I want to show you what I saw as well in this, how you know it's not staged. Because in one way, you would think it does. But if I can get it just right, and I think it's this one right here, but you got to get the frame just, there you go, there you go. If you look right there on the sides of his face there, he's got two big gashes in the side of his face. Uh, from where something, you know, debris, could have been glass, could have been anything. It's not shrapnel, I don't believe. I think it's just glass that, that hit him uh, because he doesn't have anything deep wounds there, but it, but some, some kind of something hit him there. But I just happened to catch it to where I could get a decent look at him. And, uh, and see, that's the type of stuff I look for when these type videos come out because there is so much propaganda going on. And you don't know who's who or what's what. I mean, it's evident that the bomb was real. And also, the other thing, if you notice, there's with this guy here, the bomb went off. You literally see the stuff falling down. And by the time, you know, he comes around at the same time while the stuff's falling. But you got this many people around there uh, that quick there. So it's not really something you can stage. And uh, there, is a, there is a couple of other places there. You'll see people laying on the ground there that are, that are still kind of, you know, it's kind of hard to see. So... I, I don't know. I think this. I think 60 people in all died in this this blast here. And this was in Aleppo, by the way. Um, happened in Aleppo, Syria. And I think I think if they're re, they were reported, either 40 or 60 people one were killed as a result of this blast. So on this video here, the guy is not taking the time really to look around to see what's going on. It's just kind of it's kind of very rapid. And uh, but that is one massive. Uh, I, I'm assuming it was a car bomb, uh, but I cannot confirm that as of right now. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and hey, we're getting close to the countdown of January 15th. Uh, we will be there in Paris, France to actually cover the, the UN meeting that is going on there. Uh, and we think uh, some of you have actually uh, reached out to try to help us in covering the cost for that. Uh, because we feel like it's a very moment, uh, mo uh, monumental, um, uh, I, don't, I don't even know the, know the right words to say on it, I really don't. It will certainly be a, a day that will probably never be forgotten again. And uh, there was uh, someone speaking about uh, a book that Pope Francis is pushing right now. And the the, the nerve-wracking thing about the book that he's pushing on this, not on this particular event, but a book that he is suggesting for people to read. I was listening to a commentary about it, and it speaks about there being, uh, it's a novel, but it being uh, a book about a, a coming Antichrist world leader, and it's some American that becomes a world leader that becomes the Antichrist. And, uh, and, but what's interesting in there, there's also, it speaks about uh, a Francis, a Catholic bishop uh, or something like that by the name of Francis is in the book. And then uh, or maybe it's the pontiff at the time, and I think the book was written before Pope Francis became Pope. And uh, the other thing that was kind of unique in the book is it speaks about a UN meeting being held in Paris, France on January the 15th. Uh, and it talks about how the riots that break out in this book. Something like that. I've not had a chance really looking into it that, that deeply as of yet. Uh, but do be praying for us, uh, and if you would like to be a part of that, we certainly appreciate it. You can visit us, IsraeliNewsLive.org. And by the way, we've had some changes to our website as well. 
Uh, so do check out the website there. Uh, we've, our, our web guy has included a, uh, a page there that carries all of the, uh, or, or at least like a month's worth of our old news broadcast as well, because we do have a lot of traffic that goes to Israeli News Live. And one last thing, in closing, do remember Brother Aaron Murray. Uh, he has helped us for a long time in the ministry there, but he's really come under a, a very bad uh, physical attack in his body for quite some time now. And uh, I just ask you to remember him in prayer. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.